Welcome everybody to Algebra 2, Section 7.4, Solving Exponential and Radical Equations. So for our warm-up, we're going to solve these without a calculator, the value of 36 over 4 to the 1 half power, aka the square root of all of that. So um, you could square root each of these first, and then divide, or divide in the square root. I'm going to do um, the first option, excuse me, the second option, divide then square root. So 36 divided by 4 is 9. So 9 to the 1 half power, aka square root, it is 3. And you get the same answer if you square root it first by doing 6 over 2 and then dividing that. On letter B, simplifying these, we're adding and subtracting, and we have radicals. So you can add and subtract if you have the same radicals. So we have a cube root of 5. So we have negative 2 plus 8 is 6 times a cube root of 5, and then just plus that 6 over there. All right, so a radical equation. Radical equation is an equation. That makes sense. Um, so it's an equation with not that with a variable in the radicand. Remember, the radicand is what's um, underneath the radical. So steps to solving it, and we did this with square rooting before, so now we're going to um, do it for other roots. So you isolate the radical on one side of the equation. You raise each side of the equation to the nth power, so not just second power anymore because it's not just square roots, and then you solve the resulting equation. Now hence, um, hey, you can have extraneous solutions. Remember, that's extra solutions that aren't actually answers. And you can know that by plugging it back in. So it says, hey, um, check for them. And when they can happen is if the denominator is equal to 0 or the square root is a negative number. And really, it's any even root of a negative. So you really need to check for them when there's an even root that you're raising to a power um, and or if there is a um, variable in the denominator. All right, and then sometimes double square, you need to um, square both sides twice or do the nth power of some side twice, um, depending on if there's multiple radicals. So um, example one, two times the cube root of x minus three equals four. So the radical is the cube root of x minus three, not by itself yet, so we divide by two. Now we have the cube root of x minus 3 is equal to 2. So to undo the cube root, we cube it. And we do it to both sides. Cube and the cube root undo each other, so we're left with x minus 3. On the right-hand side, 2 cubed is 8. So now we say, okay, add 3 to both sides, and x is 11. And if we were to plug it back in, we take, hey, 11 minus 3, the cube root of that, would be end up being, excuse me, the cube root would end up being 2, because 11 minus 3 is 8. Take the times 2, and you would get 4. Well, like I said earlier, the only times you really need to check for extraneous solutions is if there's going to be a variable in the denominator, or if you have an even root. With that being said, let's go on to example 2. So 7x to the 3 fifths power is equal to 56. So notice the exponent's only on the x, so we need to get rid of the 7. So we have x to the 3 fifths is equal to 8. So, good rule of thumb is how to get rid of the exponent. Multiply by the reciprocal. So when it's written as an exponent, instead of, just a reference, let's say the fifth root of x cubed, a good rule of thumb is to multiply by the reciprocal always. So it'd be like, hey, you're going to take that fifth root. Okay, well take both sides of the fifth power. Okay, then after that, you would get x cubed, so then you'd have to cube root again anyway. So doing the 5 thirds power takes care of both of those steps at the same time. And because we raised one side of the 5 thirds power, we raise the other side. And we chose 5 over 3 once again, because it's their reciprocal of 3 over 5, the exponent. So those exponents simply reduce, and you get to x. On the right-hand side, you have 8 to the 5 thirds power. Now, you could, if you wanted to, raise 8 to the 5th power, then take the cube root of that. 
but it would be much easier to take the cube root of 8 first, aka use the 3 in the denominator first, or do that 3 in the denominator first, then take that to the fifth power. So the cube root of 8 is 2, and now it's going to be 2 to the fifth power. And you wouldn't really need to put that in parentheses in this case, since it's a positive. So 2 to the fifth power is 32. And once again, because there's not a variable in the denominator, and there's not an even root, we had a fifth root, um, which is odd, then you don't need to really check for an extraneous solution. I know example three might be a good idea for you to try this on your own. We'll start by subtracting three from both sides. So you have x plus two to the two thirds power is equal to four. Get rid of the exponent of two thirds, aka it being squared into the, and the third root of it. Take it to the three halves power of the reciprocal. Those exponents reduce and you're left with x plus two, whatever's inside. And on the right hand side, um, once again, you could cube 64, then square root that. Um, I always recommend doing the root first to make the number smaller. So the square root of 4 is 2, and then 2 cubed is 8. And now we have an additional step of subtracting 2, which had to be done after we cube it uh, 2. And we get x equals 6. Once again, um, we didn't have an even root to start. We had a root of three to start. So even though we had a two on the bottom there, that's not the concern. Um, or excuse me, I misspoke there. Um, that would be a concern because I forgot about that we would have positive and negative two cubed because we square rooted both sides. So that's when the even root comes in. Um, so I misspoke. I mixed those up for a second. I apologize for that. So we do have to be concerned. It's not if um, originally it was a, an odd or even root. It's when you take the exponents, raise it to the power, if it's an odd or even root that you're doing to both sides. So when you did the um, an even root to the right-hand side, you created a positive or negative 2 being cubed, which creates both a positive and negative 8. So you'd have two scenarios there. One is x plus 2 equals 8, and the other is x plus 2 equals negative 8. Subtract 2 in either of these examples, or both of them, and you get 6 and negative 10. And we should check for an extraneous solution, so we'll check. Um, and the reason why I'm saying we should is because it was a... Um, even root that we ended up taking of both sides and creating thus two solutions. So we check by plugging it back in and if we were to plug it back in and take 6 plus 2 we'd get 8. The cube root of 8 is 2 so this would result in 2 being squared and that would give you all of this being 4 and 4 plus 3 is 7. All right, do the same thing with negative 10. Negative 10, plug it in, you get negative 8. The cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. Square that, and you get positive 4. So either way, you get 4 plus 3, which is 7. So those are our two answers. Continuing on. Example 4, so once again, uh, might be a good idea to try this on your own if you feel comfortable. If not, we're going to do it right now. So what's being under radical or uh, rooted in general is x minus 6. And that is by itself, even though there's more stuff on the right-hand side. So it's a um, square root, so we square both sides. And you get x minus 6. On the right-hand side, you can't just call it once again, can't just call it x squared minus 64, 8 squared. What you have to do instead is write it twice and actually find what x minus 8 times x minus 8 is. And if you want to do that work off to the side and say, okay, off to the side, I'm going to do x minus 8, x minus 8, and then put the answer in, you definitely can. And I'm going to do that here just to save room. So off to the side, x squared minus 8x 
minus 8x plus 64. And that combines to be x squared minus 16x minus 64. So once again, very important that you square the entire side, right side, not just like the x, not just the a, or them individually. So now in order to solve this one, we'll need to get all the variables together and have it equal to zero because we created a, we have a solution where we're going to have to factor. So I'm going to subtract x and add the 6. And I'm going to go ahead and put the equal to zero on the right-hand side, just for familiarity. So we get x squared minus 17x plus 70. We have three terms. We look for a GCF, but there is none. So we make an x to factor with three terms. The top, a times c is 70. The bottom, the b, is negative 17. And our factors end up being negative 10 and negative 7. And we can use a shortcut because a is 1. So we do x minus 10, x minus 7, and we get 0. A equal to 0. So now we um, have those two equations that result from it. And solving both equations gives you 7 and 10. And we check, hey, are either of these extraneous? Um, and for that um, reason, I'm going to write it um, separately, just so that way if one of them is extraneous, which hint, hint, one of them will be, we aren't writing them together and have to like rewrite it and cross it out. Because, um, well, I have to say, hey, that's extraneous and not an actual solution. So to check, um, thankfully, this one's a pretty quick one to check. We take 7, plug it in. 7 minus 6, well, that's 1. If you square 1, that's 1. So this side results in 1. Or square root 1, you get 1. This side, if you plug it in, you end up getting 7 minus 8, which is negative 1. 1 does not equal negative 1. So 7 is an extraneous solution. 10, if we plug it into both, you end up getting 10 minus 6 is 4, the square root of 4 is 2. On the right-hand side, you have 10 minus 8 is 2. So that one checks out just fine. So x minus 10, or x equals 10, not minus 10, is our solution. Once again, we knew we had to check for an extraneous because um, we had an even root and we squared both sides. All right, example 5. This time we have two different roots. And so we say, okay, well, they're both kind of by themselves, but also both kind of not. So what we want to do is move one of them to the right-hand side. It doesn't really matter which one in the grand scheme of things. So I'm going to move the one on the right by subtracting it. So we have the fourth root of 3x minus 2. And that's going to equal the negative fourth root of 2x. So now they're both by themselves. So I undo the fourth root. We'll take both sides of the fourth power. On the left-hand side, you get 3x minus 2. On the right-hand side, even though there's a negative, it won't affect anything because you're taking a negative to the fourth power. So it's just going to be an even number of times, hence making negative times a negative is a positive. Doing it twice more will still result in a positive. So we are left with 2x. Solving this one, we see, um, I would subtract 3x, though you could subtract 2x if you'd like. And you get negative 2 is equal to negative x. Divide by negative 1 or multiply by negative 1, and you get x equals 2. Now, it was an even root, so even though there's only one answer here, um, it's a good idea to check for an extraneous. So I will check, plug it in. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 minus 2 is 4. So we have the um, fourth root of 4 to keep in mind. On the um, other part of it up here, we'd have 2 times 2 is 4, the fourth root of 4. And we said, hey, even though those are both positive underneath there, that's good. This is not going to be imaginary. Can we have two positive things add up to equal 0? No, we definitely can't. So we have to keep in mind, hey, wait, this won't work. This one's actually extraneous. So there's actually no solution to this problem. Because we got one answer, and it was extraneous. 
All right, example six. The cube root of x plus five is equal to x minus one. I want you to try this one on your own. All right, the cube root's already by itself. So we'll cube both sides. You get x plus five is equal to, and I'm gonna do this off to the side again. Minus one, x minus one, and x minus one. Three of them. So the first two will result in x squared minus x minus x plus one. And I'm going to clean that one up before continuing. Get x squared minus 2x minus 1, which means plus 1. Now multiply these together, and we get x cubed minus x squared minus 2x squared plus 2x plus x minus 1. Clean that up, and I'm going to put this right over here to get x cubed minus x squared, um, let me try that again, x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2x minus 6. Now we'll want to move everything to one side. I'm sorry, that wasn't right either. Let me try that again one more time. So x cubed minus 3x squared plus 3x minus 1. Now we need to move everything to one side. So I'll do that by subtracting x and subtracting 5. And I'll put the equal 0 on the right, just once again for familiarity. So now we have what I wrote just a moment ago of x cubed minus 3x squared um, plus 2x minus 6. Apologize for that mix up. Now we have four terms that equal zero. So we want to factor. We all want to look for a JCF. There is none. Four terms tells us to group the first two, group the last two. The first two we have x squared as a GCF and you're left with x minus three. The last two you have a positive two and you're left with x minus three. Those are the identical, which is good. So we have x minus three is one parenthesis. The other parenthesis is x squared plus two. Writing these equations, we get x minus 3 equals 0, x squared plus 2 equals 0. You might notice something about this equation. If you don't, continue on and you'll notice it in a second. The left equation gives us x equals 3. The other equation, we subtract 2 and we get x squared equals negative 2. Square root both sides and you get x equals positive or negative square root of negative 2. Wait a second, that's imaginary. These are taking the square root or an even root in general of a negative number. So even though, yeah, it would end up being x is positive or negative i square root 2, we don't need to concern ourselves with that because it's an imaginary number. Now, in previous chapters, yes, we would have gone through that work and said, hey, yeah, it's positive, negative i square root 2. I'm not asking you to do that on this chapter. So our only answer would be x equals 3. And we don't need to check for an extraneous because we are doing cube roots and cube powers. So that was odd. Number seven. Number seven, um, there's two radicals and neither one's quite by itself. Um, so in this scenario, because um, uh, we actually just need to square both sides because nothing we would do would actually help. Because if we divide by four here, well, we just created the the problem where now this one's not by itself with division rather than this one not being by itself because of multiplication. So we square both sides. And on the left side, as you square this, you actually just end up with 16 times x minus 2. And we have to put that in parentheses still because it hasn't distributed to it yet. On the right hand side, we get x plus 13. So now we distribute that 16, and we get 16x minus 32 equals x plus 13. I'm going to subtract the x and get 15x, and add the 32 and get 45. Dividing by 15 gives us x equals 3. We do want to check this because we did um, an even root, even power. So plug it in, and you get... 3 minus 2 
4 times the square root of 1 equal to 3 plus 13, the square root of 16. Well, those will both end up being 4. So we're good. x equals 3 is our answer. Example 8. Once again, I would encourage you to try this on your, on your own. All right, the root or the um, part being raised to a power is not by itself, so we'll add 9 to both sides to get x minus 4 to the 2 thirds power is equal to 25. To undo the exponent of 2 thirds, you're going to raise both sides to the 3 halves. And those exponents reduce, and you get x minus 4. On the right hand side, we are square rooting 5. Um, or 25, so the square root of 25 is both positive and negative. 5, I should have said 5 a moment ago, forgot to. And we're cubing it still. So we get x minus 4, and if we cube positive 5, we get 125, and if we cube negative 5, we get um, x minus 4 equals negative 125. Sorry, I was deciding if I wanted to write it in this equation here as positive, negative, or in its own separate. And I decided to write it in a separate because we're going to split it up anyway. So now solving these, we add 4 to each side in either equation. And we get 129 for one and negative 121 for the other. And um, once again, a good idea to check for extraneous because we did end up square rooting both sides and thus creating two answers even though we had an odd root to start. So plugging in 129, you end up taking 125 to the 2 thirds power. Well, the cube root of 125, as we just saw, was 5. And if we square that and subtract 9, it would be 25 minus 9, and it would give you 16. If we say, OK, what about negative 121? It would give you the cube root of negative 125, and then square that. So that would be negative 5, and squaring that would still give you a positive 25, so we're good. Last but not least, example 9. I would encourage you to try this one on your own. All right, the radical is by itself, so we'll square both sides because it's a uh, square root. You're left with 10x plus 9, and remember we actually have to write out x plus 3 and x plus 3 and work that map out to get x squared plus 3x plus 3x plus 9, which combines to be x squared plus 6x plus 9. So we will need to move all the variables on one side. I'm going to put equal 0 on the right, x squared. And if I subtract the 10x to move it toward the 6x, we get negative 4x. If I subtract the 9 to move to the other 9, we get well, nothing. So it's just x squared minus 4x equals 0. And I left an awkward gap before my equal sign, so I'm going to rewrite it. Now we look to factor it. We always look for a GCF, and here's why. Because there is one. It's x. And then we have x minus 4 equals 0. Two terms in the parentheses. We say, OK, is it a difference of two squares, difference of two cubes, sum of two cubes? And it's none of those things because it's just x and not x squared this time. So it's not a square to start, even though 4 is a square and we are subtracting. So now we have multiplication or factors that equal 0. So we set each equal to 0. The left one's already solved. That's convenient. The right one had 4 to get x equals 4. We did have an even root and an even power, so a good idea to check for extraneous solutions. And as we check for extraneous solutions, we say, okay, 10 times 0, if we plug in 0, is 0, so add 9. So the square root of 9, which is 3. And over here, 0 plus 3 is 3. So that one checks out. The other one, 4, we have to get 10 times 4 is 40. So the square root of 49 plus 4 plus 3. Well, both of those are 7. So this one ends up being both 0 and 4. All right, that is all today for section 7.4.